where else but the West End House Boys and Girls Club do you come up to the podium and it's sprinkled in glitter? Um, but I, I knew it would be because I saw the rainbow unicorn outside. So uh, I'm Joe Mulligan. I'm the uh, vice president of the, uh, the board of directors. I'm also uh, chair of the building committee and uh, an alumnus. And uh, I started coming here when I was a kid. My mother wanted her sons to get out into the country and get some fresh air and sunshine and commune with nature. So she would give us a dime and put us on the trolley from Boston College and send us out to the wilds of Alston. And it's, and it's, it's great, great to be back here. And there were three things you could do uh, when I was a kid here. You could go for a swim. Uh, you could go to the gymnasium. And the hole downstairs was filled with billiard tables. And that, they thought, was a great life skill for kids and uh, help, help work my way through college, hustling pool and uh, late at nights out in Worcester. And it's, um, but boy, how the building has changed and how, how the club has changed and no longer just a place uh, to drop in and, and kill some time and hustle some pool. Uh, we really spend a lot of time with all the kids and to provide the, the resources and the opportunities and the guidance um, that you, you might not be able to find elsewhere. And uh, it's, a, it's a real great place to be proud of. Um, I started out, uh, you know, as a kid here and, and, and fast forward 45 years later plus, and I'm still here. And uh, it's, it's great. And Andrea won't let me get away. Uh, she, she lives around the corner from me. I can't even hide. She walks her dog and she goes, oh, hey, Joe, I'll be out on the porch. We, we need this, we need that. And, uh, but it, it's a labor of love. Um, Speaking of labor, there's been a lot of, of work uh, that went into the club over the last uh, couple of years. Um, obviously, the, the beautiful facility that we're sitting in today, uh, we just have completed a, a $10 million uh, full renovation from top to bottom of the club in this new addition into uh, Ringer Park. And none of that would be possible without uh, we put together a real great team in order to make that happen. And, and good projects start with great teams, uh, starting with uh, kind of our, our quarterback for that and Bill Cunniff from NV5. I want to give a big shout out of, of thanks. Uh, you know, attorneys from Goulston and Stores and, and uh, the architect firm of uh, Liz Weinzaffel who are here and, and Josiah and Bobby uh, and this team have done a great job here today. And I think um, if you look around when we, when we started the project, uh, you know, we, we wanted to put, we wanted to create a place that was special and, and even down to thinking about the, the way the structure is arranged and the shape of the building. Uh, and the materials that put into it, we're really looking to create a place uh, that would be something we'd be proud of uh, for generations to come. And I, and I know we've, we've nailed that with the help of Shawmut Design and Construction, and Steve Hassel is representing here today, uh, one of the premier local Boston construction firms. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working with in the past. I look forward to working with them in the future. Um, and really an A-team, a a a Arup and uh, Weston and Samson and LeMessure are our subconsultants. And uh, the, the ability for that team to manage this project and deliver it on time, on budget, in a real hyperactive construction uh, market that is, is really unprecedented in this part of the world is, is a great testament to the strength of that team, including working with uh, our, our partners in the city and the, and, and the mayor and his staff and the Redevelopment Authority and the Parks uh, and Recreation Department. And obviously, the generosity of our board of directors and our donors and uh, the hard work of the development staff that were able to pull together the resources to make this happen. And I also want to give a, a special thanks to our building committee, um, uh, comprised of uh, Henry Barr and, and Andrew Mustaw, who's the president of the, the board. Um, and folks from the, the private development community, uh, Leslie Cohen, who also from Samuels, also joined the board of directors. Uh, Jim Halliday, our, our neighbors down here uh, with NB Development, uh, doing all the work down there in Boston Landing. Uh, and Dave Bracken, who uh, started out with HYM and is now uh, uh, with another firm. But uh, Mayor, when you, when you talk about the dividends to be received from the amount of development that's happening here in the, in the city, I know there's a great kind of hustle to get extractions and, and you know, a dollars here and there, which are very important, but what we were blessed to be able to uh, grab from all the new development here was the talent and to have the commitment from those folks to come here once a week for over a year and, and, and share their expertise with us. 
Uh, the money's good, but the expertise and the talent is, is really great, and uh, I'm, gr I'm happy that we were able to avail ourselves of that. And I'd like to give a, a thanks uh, to all those who worked on that uh, project with us over the last uh, couple of years, actually. Yeah, put it, put it, get it together. Uh, in, in our neighbors have been great. You know, obviously construction creates a lot of disruption and we had to come up through the park uh, and take down a wall and we're going to put that back. Everything will be reassembled and we're finishing our landscaping. We're not quite done yet, but we're, we're right there at the very end. Um, and a lot of times, uh, you know, in, in, in the development world, the, the premium is put on on finance and uh, return on investment, internal rate of return and, you know, dividends from windfalls. And sometimes what gets lost is, is a really a pursuit of creating something beautiful. And with our team, we were able to create, uh, I think, a, a really special place uh, as the club is continuing our second century of service to the community. Uh, I think there was a realization that our kids deserve something beautiful and something timeless and something that will, will withstand the test of, of the decades as they march forward. And I think if folks got a chance to look around at the finishes here, in the uh, in the shape and the form of this building, it, it's it's a really special place. Doesn't mean it costs a whole lot more because there's great efficiencies with this uh, oval space that we saved in other material costs, and we were able to reinvest that back into the building, including uh, what we consider kind of an interpretation or restoration of the park here. And we made a particular point to make sure that the we broke down the barriers between this institution and the park and our neighbors and, and the institutions that abut us. And uh, this park is actually designed by the, the Olmstead sons, his son and, and, uh, and his stepson. So we continue to really enhance that legacy of people that came generations before us to serve our purpose to, to create a beautiful place for the generations yet to come. Um, as we're tasked uh, with those difficult challenges uh, on, a, on a rare occasion, uh, there's somebody who has to deal with those types of issues on a daily basis, not only ensuring that Boston is one of the great cities on the planet in which to live, but also ensuring that uh, he guides it into the future that, so that it, it is a great place for the people who live here now and for generations to come. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Mayor Walsh today to join us and, and welcome him to the club. Thank you, Joe, and, and I want to thank uh, Joe for all of the great work that he does, um, and I know that he loves this place um, because he just asked me if the city would give him the park out back, so we'll figure it out later. Uh, but I want to thank you, Joe, uh, and the board here uh, for all the great work you do. Uh, I want to thank Andrea um, and her entire staff here at the club for the great work that they do as well. And, and um, I was just talking to Bob Scandal. I spent uh, a lot of time, almost um, 20 years in the Georgetown Boys and Girls Club, uh, with Bob was the director and is the director and um, you know when I come into a club I think of the work that we do uh, at, at the Boys and Cl Girls Club in Dorchester and I think of the board meetings and, and, and the same here in this club it's all about the young people it's all about the kids it's all about opportunities for them and I want to thank again the staff that's here today because I know that uh, you might not get enough credit and praise for what you do I want to thank all the young staff that's here today that today's your last day and you're going back to school in a couple of weeks so congratulations to all of you as well um, and to Andrea as well for, for the great work we, we were talking the other day um, I just want to correct one thing Joe said uh, Joe was absolutely right when he said that the talent and the expertise in construction is great and thank you for that and that the money's good uh, both is good the money's great and the expertise is great so keep the coming both of them so thank you for that uh, I also want to uh, welcome uh, my dear friend who I served in the House of Representatives with uh, for 16 years, Kevin Hone, and, uh, and all the neighbors that are here today, all the teens, the volunteers, and the donors who made this happen. Um, the West End House is an incredible asset in this community. Uh, I'm just going to read some of the, some of the stats that, that are here that are really mind-blowing when you think about it. Over 1,700 youth are served here every year. Over half of them are teens over the age of 13 years old. So talk about a positive influence in their life and having young people, young teenagers, as their years are getting formed of, of, as young adults. It's happening right here in this club. Um, this club's keeping kids safe, keeping kids active, keeping kids engaged. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. 99% of the West End House seniors graduate high school. Um, when you think about that. <laughs> 
96% of those who, in, uh, who graduate enroll in college. Uh, that's another incredible, we should clap that. And 115 of the youth are engaged in working now and gaining, gaining in, uh, experience as employees. Uh, it's no surprise that, that this organization is recognized as one of the, the greatest clubs in the country. But when you think about the impact, those of you that are here today that, that are thinking about making donations and wh where do you donate to, if you work for companies looking to make investments, uh, a place like this is a place where you make the investments. Uh, where you think about the kids that are graduating here, uh, almost 100% of them are going on to college uh, and, and, and they're getting that foundation at the young age, starting at the age of 13 in this club. So you think about what the impact of this club has, not just on the young people that go through the doors here and graduate, but the impact it has on society, it has on the city of Boston. Uh, we've, we've been able to add 100,000 new jobs in the city of Boston in the last four years. We've been able to add 40,000 new people living in the city of Boston. We're growing like never before, and the reason why we're doing this is that people are saying the talent in Boston is amazing, and the young people that live here, the millennials that live here, and those are all the kids that, that, that are being benefited from places like this place. So again, I want to congratulate all all of the club. Um, today, we're also excited to celebrate, and Joe touched upon this, the largest renovation and expans expansion uh, in, in, the, in the history of the club here. Uh, that's how uh, we're going to continue to build a strong future for our young people. It's how we're going to continue to expand opportunities and programming for our young people. Uh, we can already envision this, this impact that it's going to make here in, in Austin, Brighton, but also in the city. Uh, this new pavilion, which is state-of-the-art, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, when you think about it, when you come in here, the acoustics are incredible. Um, and the opportunities for what's going to be the talent that, that kids are going to be able to start in this very room is going to be amazing. Uh, it's going to be a hub for citywide events and programming. Uh, the new fitness center is going to help people, young people stay active and stay in good shape. Renovated gym, obviously you can't complain with a renovated gym. When you get a renovated gym, you get new hoops and wiffle ball and everything else you play in the gym. So it's all fun stuff. Expanded kitchen um, that not only you're talking about in the past, uh, you know, I, I just leaned over to Bob when Joe talked about the, the pool tables. And I remember the Boys and Girls Club back in the day, there was a pool table, the one in Dorchester. And I, I said, is the pool table still there? He goes, no, it's gone. Uh, and clubs are so much more now. So when you think about expanded kitchens, you're thinking about healthy food, you're thinking about healthy nutrition, you're thinking about helping young people make the right decisions when they're going to eat and as they grow and their bodies grow, understanding that, that there's opportunities to help them with that. Uh, updating college and career and education center uh, and an art wing that's helping helping develop uh, new skills and interests. And, and you know, today I just had a meeting in my office uh, with our new chief of arts and culture. And when you think about arts and culture, a lot of people think of paintings on a wall or they think of a museum. Uh, they don't understand the impact, the economic impact that arts and culture has in a city. And it's one of the main drivers in our country, arts and culture, as far as economic drivers in our country. And there's an opportunity here in this club, again, to get young people exposed to something that otherwise might never have thought of. Uh, and that's so important. And the West End House is le legendary in our city from its origins serving new immigrants to heroes like Don Jaffier, who had developed her passion for helping young people here. Um, this, is an, this institution is a part of Boston's heart and soul. So today marks an exciting chapter uh, in the West End House. The improvements are going to help empower young people uh, and connect them to the communities for years to come. It's also, you got to think for a minute, the people that work here too, the staff, um, the impacts that the, the new club has on the staff and, and allowing them to, to make their skills sharper so they can go on and do great things too. Because many of the people that we have that are, that are staff here, you're going to go on to be teachers and, 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 and city councilors and state representatives and mayors and all the other stuff. So it's important the work that you do as well because you, you get an opportunity to learn and grow here as well. So I want to congratulate you. And and I want, I'm proud to celebrate uh, with people who make this so special. Uh, people like Don Jaffier, um, who we think about today, and her dad is here with us today. Uh, and I want to thank him for being with us. Uh, people like all of you that are here today. And I want to, again, congratulate uh, Andrea and, and the board for this amazing work. And now I have the great honor of introducing somebody who, um, uh, when I think about uh, an elected official and somebody who, who absolutely loves their community uh, and spends time in making sure every event that I've ever gone to uh, in, in the Austin Brighton neighborhood, uh, Kevin Honan is always there. And um, one of the big challenges that we have in the city of Boston right now and in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is, as I said, that we have 100,000 new jobs and 40,000 new people living in our city. That's all great. Uh, but one of the biggest challenges we have is housing. 
um, in this neighborhood has felt it because every developer in the world wants to come and build all kinds of housing in, in the Austin Brighton neighborhood and some of it's good and some of it isn't so good. Uh, but part of it is we need to make sure we, we think about uh, affordable housing as well. And some of that comes with the development, a lot of it doesn't. And Kevin was the, was the author of the largest housing bond bill in the history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that passed the legislature this year. And uh, he was in touch with me the whole time saying we need to make sure that we continue to make our city affordable and livable for everyone. And what he saw in his neighborhood and what he sees in his neighborhood is people that live here uh, are selling their homes and they're selling them for big money. And the families that used to be here years ago aren't here anymore. And we talked about that and we said we need a peace. We need, we need help from the legislative side um, on this. And not only did he help us, but he sent the biggest bond bill uh, to the governor's desk, which the governor signs. And your state representative, my friend, Representative Honan. Thank you very much, Mayor. It's a great honor and privilege for me to be here. Uh, I grew up in this park, like Joe, Joe Mulligan was talking about how he grew up here. So, and in, uh, this is where I grew up. And in 1971, the West End House opened. So it gave the kids in the neighborhood an extraordinary opportunity to play basketball. Uh, it had a pool, which my brother and I very rarely went into. We were basketball people, and we played pool downstairs and ping pong. And I have all sorts of trophies, ping pong trophies, and whatever. And uh, I opened the Herald this morning, and I saw the mayor playing street hockey at the Boston Garden and shooting hoops with the kids. I said, what a great job he has, huh? And uh, our neighborhood, we'd go over to Daniel Marr and play basketball and beat the Dorchester kids, but they were always better singers and dance. They were better singers and dancers than us. So now, and that dancing skill has helped the mayor for the last few years. And so now we're going to catch up with them here. Uh, we go to a lot of events, but this event is truly special. I thank all of you, as Mayor Walsh said, thank you for opening up your checkbooks and allowing the kids of Alston Brighton and the kids of Boston to have such a world-class facility here. You can go to our wealthy suburbs and you won't see anything like this. So thank you all for doing this. Thank you, Andrea, for being the executive director with such a vision here to actually plan and have a vision for something like this in a working class neighborhood in Boston, say, how are we going to raise the money? So thank you for everyone who stepped up here and made this happen. And that leads to Rudy Ash, our fundraiser. What an extraordinary job you did. And he said, Kevin, I want to work for nonprofits that have soul, and that's the West End House. So thank you for the extraordinary work you did for us. And uh, Andrew, Andrew Musto has been a wonderful board president. Thank you for everything you've done for the West End. And my dear friend, Joe Mulligan, vice, vice chair of the board, architecture, thank you for all the volunteer service you've provided here, Joe. <laughs> Joe and I are good friends, and we go to concerts all the time. And to know that, and thank you, Sue, for letting Joe go. Sue played basketball at Holy Cross, as Joe did. Dick Mulligan played football there. And their daughter, Maggie, signed a contract. She's playing professional basketball in Germany right now. So sports are an integral part of that family. And we thank Ann Mulligan, who was also a good basketball player in the day, too. So, um, so many of our kids here go to fine colleges. Again, when I was growing up here, we had the pool, the basketball court, pool tables, billiards. Now we have so many academic opportunities here for kids to learn from mentors from Berkeley School of Music. In fact, there's four co-op students that are here teaching our kids music. And I would have loved to have uh, played an instrument as a kid. That opportunity wasn't here. It wasn't here in the public schools, as Tony Desidoro knows, who was my teacher at the Taft. We would learn how to read music, but we didn't learn how to play instruments. We just didn't have it in the Boston Public Schools. So now the partnership that the Boys and Girls Club have of Boston in Dorchester, Alston, Brighton, and in every other neighborhood, is just so extraordinary. So opportunities are going to be presented to our kids that wouldn't have been able to happen without the generosity of the Board of Directors, 
and without the generosity of the charitable community of Boston and this region of Massachusetts. So again, on behalf of this neighborhood and this city, I thank everyone who donated to this cause, including you, Paul. Thank you all. And with that, I would like to introduce our extraordinary executive director who has such a wonderful vision for this organization that goes back to James Jackson Starrow in 1906. And she has kept the mission going really strong, putting pedal to the metal. Andrea Howard. Thanks, folks. I really appreciate um, everybody coming out this afternoon. We've got a big night here in Austin Brighton. After this, we move right into our biggest fun ever event, our annual um, event to honor the memory of Don Jaffier. So I'm going to be brief because who I really want you to hear from is Ariana Sierra. And uh, I'm the only thing standing in between that. So um, you've heard a lot of thank yous, but uh, I got to add a few more. Um, First of all, and I know a lot of the staff are out and about, you know, handling a lot of responsibilities, but to the staff that this was a phased project, so we did not want to close. When we did a renovation back in 2000, we closed, we moved to St. Gabriel's Monastery, we moved to a church, we moved to Brighton Center. It was really hard um, to sort of bring everybody back together after that. So we set out to live amongst a um, renovation project, and I'm sure for those of us have, that have done that in our own homes, you know how challenging that can be. So to the staff that for three months had a space, and then for three months, you know, our dance class went from a beautiful dance studio to a, uh, the lobby of the, um, of the, you know, right there in the atrium. So the staff really, uh, and I'm, I'm only looking at a couple of them, so please, when you see your coworkers, let them know that there was a big shout out for them for uh, enabling services to continue um, while this transformation was being done. It was a really big priority for us. Um, and of course the kids who really tolerated, although I think they loved the way they got to sort of bounce around to some different spaces. I think some kids were in spaces they'd never been in before. So we you know, made, um, made the best of a challenging situation, but because we knew what the prize was at the end. Um, and while we've thanked a lot of our p other people, I did just want to thank some of our funders that are here with us today. Folks from the New Balance Company and Foundation are here that I want to give a shout out to. The Lewis Family Foundation is here today. Liberty Mutual Foundation. Um, as was, and then the crew from Head of the Charles, we're really excited that we're, this is our second year being an official charity charity of uh, the Head of the Charles Regatta. So those, that's a group along with a wonderful other group of folks like the Barr Foundation, the Clarman Family Foundation that helped make this possible. So um, that's enough for me because I want you to hear from a special young woman who, like a lot of teens, I mean part of the reason this project happened is we had this explosive growth of teens. A lot of it was influenced by Boston Public Schools and who was coming out to, uh, to Austin Brighton for schools. And we went from serving maybe 30 to 50 teens a day to serving 150 teens a day. And that's more than 50% of the kids that were coming in. So, um, and we had 900 little square feet for them. So they now have close to 4,000 square feet. But in the process, a lot of kids found us later in life. Um, and, you know, maybe we have some that were, you know, went to Bob's Club as a kid, and then since they were going to high school over in Brighton, they started coming down here, but they always had, you know, two resources, which was great. Um, and Ariana was one of the young people that came to us when she was in ninth grade. So we're excited that we're still a place that, even when you're in high school, there's something here that's going to draw you in. We really work hard to um, make sure that we stay relevant, that, um, that everybody knows that they, that they belong. So without further ado, Ariana's going to come up and, and talk a little bit, uh, make a few remarks, and more importantly, then introduce the performance. So thanks. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good. So my name is Ariana Sierra. I'm 17 years old, and I've been in Weston House since I was in ninth grade. So there's a bunch of things that go around in Weston House, and I, I want to show what my experience has been. 
So the peer leader program was actually my first job experience here. It's a great program where we can learn how to be independent, work with young youth, and have time management. The college and career program is where you can meet Morgan and Portia. Now Morgan and Portia have helped me a lot during this school year. I did dual enrollment at Bunker Hill Community College and I did high school at the same time. So without them, I wouldn't have known what that I could do dual enrollment and, and high school, my bad, and high school at the same time. So then we have the Kitchen and Cafe. The Kitchen and Cafe has changed a lot during this past year. We have now the kids, have, um, we have the kids serving themselves as a family meal and they help us clean up afterwards. It's just to show that how a family can be and we can be more together through the family meal. And next we have the music clubhouse. I really like the music clubhouse because it has a new recording studio. You can have your private lessons with some of the new staff. You can also play, learn how to play new instruments, experiment, whatever you're into. Now my favorite place is right here, the New Balance Foundation Pavilion. Here, I did dances with my friends, and without this place, I really could not explore. So I'm thankful for this place, because without it, I can't show what we've been working on these past weeks. Now, can I have Brian and Allie at the stage, please? I hope you like our little show that we're gonna put on for you. We've been working this for the past, the whole summer basically, and it's still a work in progress, so I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you.
Thank you very much. One more time for our dancers, please, and Ariana. Thank you. I'm Andrew Musto, the president of the board of directors here. I just want to say briefly, you know, one thing we wanted to make sure that we, that we didn't get recognized for, from uh, District 14, our community service officers here. We just wanted one guy's outside, we've got Jerry here. I want to say thank you very much for being here, as always. We appreciate your support very much. And I just want to say on behalf of our board, you know, I, I couldn't be more proud to be associated with this organization. The mayor said it very well. This organization has such a strong legacy since 1906, but the work's not done and the work never ends. You know, this is an innovative organization. We, find, we do have a place, the perfect place for our young people into the future. We've got the staff, we've got the infrastructure, thanks to all the work that's been put in and all the, fo the foundation support, the individual support that we've had to date and, and into the future. So I just want to say, much like the city of Boston, uh, I think the West End House, the trajectory is an aspirational one and it's on its way up. And we appreciate the support of all of you to get us on that path. So thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. Um, the mayor's going to take some pictures. We're going to do a, a ribbon cutting up here. Anyone that's staying for the, uh, for the uh, Biggest Fun Ever event, which is, by the way, very well named. Biggest Fun Ever is legitimately the biggest fun ever. Super fun. Um, we're going to be, all those people are going to stay seated. And then we're going to do a ribbon cutting, do some pictures, then we'll have our blast out in, the, uh, out in our block party. So thank you again for being here. Let's do one more big round of applause for our staff and for everyone for being here. Thank you very much. So Mr. Mayor, uh, Representative Honan, Mr. Mulligan, our esteemed Vice President, and Andrea Howard and Ariana, please come on up and we'll do our ribbon cutting. It finally open this beautiful place. Thank you. Everybody look up right here. All right, smiles. Please smile, everybody. Have a good time. One, two, three.